The your stick, you know it. Okay, <laughs> good. So I'm with Tesla Motors. My name is Roy Goldman. I manage all the user-facing software in the car. And obviously we're close partners with NVIDIA. We're running Tegras. Um, this is actually a, a two Tegra setup. There's a Tegra driving the center display, which as you can see is a 17-inch screen. Um, it's amazing quality display, 24-bit color, 1920 by 1200 resolution. Yeah. And there's also a Tegra driving the instrument cluster. And so these are two independent computers, uh, and they're connected over Ethernet. And so we can basically synchronize these displays in real time. So you know, if I'm listening to music and I switch to the next track, I get an instant update. You know, in both places. Um, talk a little bit about the media player. You can see with the a lot of the screen real estate and the high quality display, we can really try to create some effects and, and visuals that you don't really see in, in car systems. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, we wanted to come up with metaphors that would be familiar to people. You know, we think sort of the, the way music has been approached in car systems has been sort of bastardized, and there's too much legacy from the way radios used to work. This is an interface that should be a lot more familiar to people. You know, there's a now playing tab, yeah. and there's a browse tab. And in terms of browse, there's a lot of different things you can listen to. There is traditional radio, AM, FM, XM is an option. Um, the car is always connected uh, to the internet. So we have um, internet music capabilities as well. Right now we're working with Slacker and TuneIn. Um, TuneIn organizes streaming music from around the world. Um, so you can pick music of different, music, different genre, sports, radio. Um, Slacker lets you do personalized uh, custom radio. So it doesn't matter what you want to listen to. Um, you can just pick any song, any artist um, and listen to it. Um, what we're listening to right now is onboard music. We've got several gigabytes of storage, so you can transfer your own music collection into the car. Um, you can also play music directly off a connected device. It could be a USB stick, it could be a phone, we'll have iPod integration as well. Um, by putting all the different media sources in one UI, um, rather than proliferating lots of different apps, it lets us do things like having a consistent view of what a favorite means. So your favorite could be an FM station, it could be a Slacker station, it could be an MP3. And similarly, for recently played, you get to see everything you've listened to, no matter what source it came from. So that's music. Um, we've got a custom sound system built by Tesla um, that we're pretty excited about as well. Um, switching gears a little bit, we can talk about maps and navigation. As you can see up here, this is Google Maps. Um, you can full screen anything you're looking at, and so you know it's pretty exciting to drive around with the with the satellite view of. You've got a real satellite view, is what it, I mean, yeah, as opposed can, to any other device that you'd be using or car into Right. Ship. You can look into your neighbor's yards while you're driving <laughs> around, um, and and Google's also we're using that for address and destination entry. We think that's one of the things that a lot of navigation systems have done a very poor job at yeah. um, in the past, and we don't think anyone's done it better than Google. So you know, this is essentially the interface, and you know, someone was just asking about In-N-Out Burger, and so you know. I just type a few characters, and you know Google's really good at this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, so it will basically take me where I want to go, and then I can basically hit. We've disabled it for now, but I'll hit a nav bucket button, and it will launch essentially a navigation route. And what we'll do is on the instrument cluster, you'll we'll get a complementary view. There'll be a map more oriented and tuned for navigation with a better view of upcoming turns, and that's complemented by this view of Google that can be in your uh, peripheral vision. Um, in terms of other capabilities, um, we have an integrated web browser. Um, it's a WebKit-based web browser. Um, we've got Bluetooth integration, so we'll have um, phone for Bluetooth, um, and obviously you can also use Bluetooth for playing uh, music. Um, there'll be a rear-facing camera, um, and because it's an electric car, um, there will be different tools and visualizations to help people understand how their car is actually consuming power um, and understand the different ways that uh, you know, energy gets used in the car. Um, that's sort of the quick version. Oh, one last thing I should mention is you know, the screen takes up a lot of the dash, as you can tell. Yeah. And it's taking the place of a lot of switches and knobs you'd normally see. Yeah. And so that's part of our scope as well. Here you can see you know, climate control we wanted to keep some of the key controls always there and always available. Yeah. And then you see this controls thing in the corner, which is easy to reach. That's where you can get access to other controls. Um, like lights, usually you'll have lights on in auto, um, but if you want to force them on, you know, that turns the lights on. This is real-time status of the actual hardware in the car. Um, because we've got all this real estate, 
we can do these nice car renderings um, so you can get you know a good glimpse of the state that your car is in. This will be color coordinated with the actual exterior of the car. <laughs> um, we think for sunroof, there's no better interface than something like this. Yeah. Rather than just holding a switch down, you can just drag you know, the slider where you want the sunroof to go. You let go and it will animate the roof to that target position. Um, that's about it. We've also got an iPhone app. I don't know if that's it's certainly of interest, interest, folks. Definitely. Um, when you've got something this integrated. Yeah, you know, because the car is always connected, essentially, we built infrastructure to facilitate secure two-way real-time communication um, between the car and the owner. And so, you know, there's a, we're having some challenges to the connectivity here. Uh -huh. So let's see if it will connect. But here you can see I get real-time view of my car. Um, and things like I can get status if it happens to be charging. You know, I'll get status about the charging rate, when it will be done. Um, I can see where the car is if I want to check up on my spouse. Um, if the car happens to be driving, you'll actually see the car driving across the map in real time. Climate control is another good feature. Because the car is completely electric, you don't have to worry about filling up your garage with fumes. Yeah. Um, so you can do things like just if you're if you if it's warm out, let's say you're at a game or it's cold out, you want to get the car warmed up before you get in. You just pull this out, check the interior temperature of your car, turn on climate control, and adjust temperatures. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of where we're at. This is still a work in progress, but uh, yeah, no, we got... it's uh, really impressive. I have to say, I mean, between. Uh, the design, which you guys already had, the exterior was in the bag. It, as far as I'm concerned, it's you know at inception. But then to now have this sort of integration is just above and beyond what anybody's looking at, as far as I'm concerned. One question I do have for sure. you: with the size of this display, yeah, um, and I know this is something you guys have already thought about the distraction factor. Yeah, um, and I know you mentioned with the navigation, you're going to have you know essentially not a mirror but something that's more friendly to the driver on the actual instrument sure. panel rather than here because obviously you don't want the driver always staring at this screen at least when the car's in motion um, sure well let me talk about that a second so first thing I you know it's a good opportunity to talk about the fact that we'll have steering wheel controls and so the idea is that a lot of the key functions you're going to want to do are just here at your fingertips um, and with full control over this instrument cluster a lot of those key things are just available there um, and so for a lot of cases, this display becomes something that's there in your peripheral vision. Yeah. And you can see, you know, a lot of this is is eye candy and it's not a lot of detail functionality crammed into a very small space. Yeah. And some of these buttons are extremely large. And in yeah. general, we've been very conscious of hit areas. And one thing that another um, observer pointed out is a lot of cars have very small touch screens. And you think, oh, small is going to be less distracting. But if you see how they actually end up designing their UIs, they cram really small buttons in there. And a lot of the screen technology in cars is very poor. You'll be resistive screens. Yeah. So you're sitting there trying to pick a song off those things. It's way more distracting than a big screen where you can just, if you get your finger anywhere I've close to it. I've got you already yeah, where you're going with that. this because, yeah, I mean, you're working with obviously less real estate. You've got to be more specific and you're more deliberate in your actions. And as a result, you've got to pay more right. attention to what's on screen. So that makes it yeah. good. And we are also working on voice control as well. Um, yeah. I, I just say we have a very high bar there. And yeah. so we're not rushing into putting something out that doesn't work. Um, but we already, at our keynote event in October, Elon did a demo of some voice recognition where you just basically say, I want to listen to whatever you want and just start to play. play. Yeah. No, it's really uh, an amazing car. There's no question about it. And this, again, I know it's pre-production. You guys are looking, though, at a launch this this year. Mid-year. We've already mid -year. announced mid-year. We're going to production, yeah. So, and that'll be the second quarter, I'm assuming. Um, I don't know what calendar you guys run on. Uh, yeah, you probably, I probably should quote me on the exact date that we've announced, but we've, we've made a public announcement that will be no later than, I forget, I think it was, I won't say, I forget which month it yeah, was. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to be helping yeah, anything yeah. anyway with, a, with me at least, yeah. but no, really impressed. Can't wait to see what you guys do down the road in terms of developing this and... Yeah, we're just getting started and, you know, we're really approaching this the way, you know, you think about modern consumer device where software keeps getting better. Exactly. So we'll be doing over-the-air updates um, so people keep getting new capabilities and improvements as time goes on. We don't, pe we don't want people who are the early buyers to feel penalized that they bought something early. Yeah, that's certainly a big thing in, in the industry and, and I think the familiarity, like, you know, just of what people are used to dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And the way you guys have incorporated it is uh, it's yeah. brilliant. Really We've got is. a lot of engineers from some top Silicon Valley companies, and so a lot of that experience and sort of design sense is what we're bringing 
which I think explains the familiarity that we see. In exactly. The yeah. No. And uh, the Google integration. I don't know what else you could really ask for in an automobile, <laughs> um, other than it being electric and not having to use any fuel. But uh, no, it's great. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Tiago, any questions you have in mind? Android app. <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, we will get to Android. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for our, there's a variety of reasons why we started with iOS, but we will get imagine. to Android. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely. Especially with it being Integra based, it's. I hope that you guys have it sooner rather than later, definitely. Yeah. But I think. Was that it? Any other questions? Yeah. Good. I think we covered everything. Awesome. Thank you for Thank the time. You very much.